this is brilliant because I always wanted to turn a dragon egg and now I've done it and there's a mould that does it too. <laughs> Hiya, it's Wendy here again from Team Pishcrafts and I hope you're doing okay. Today I'm playing around with dragons and eggs and I'm going to see if the new mould that I purchased from Amazon is any good because some of them can be really quite, yeah, questionable whether they work or not. So I'm going to have a play around with this one, see if I can get it to work, see what the pros and cons with the mould is. And yeah, I might even turn one as well to see if I can get one that looks any different, better, worse than the mould itself. So stick around, let's see how I get on with this one. So this is the two part dragon mould and the egg mould that I bought from Amazon. They do come as a set, I think I bought these separately but they're from the same people. It's a bit worrying that it's a two part but I'm hoping it'll work. And I'm going to use the Let's Resin Chameleon powders for this one and Black Oxide. I'm mixing it with a little bit of alcohol. This is isopropanol alcohol and by mixing that with mica powder you can kind of make a liquid paint mica powder which you can put in a small area. So I'm using that for his eyes. I do have a tutorial for this method and I'll link it in the top right hand corner for you. It doesn't take long to dry and then I can start putting in colours. I'm using champagne, blue and mint. That's my choice today for this one. So I'm going to be dusting on the mica powder in the areas that I want and cleaning up once I've put in a particular colour. The first areas I really want to colour in are those that are deepest. So I'm doing the wings and the horns, anything that's deep. If you do the deep areas first, then you don't have to worry about cleaning them out for the next colour. Because between each colour, because there's mica powder gone everywhere, and it will happen, if you use the dusting on method, it will happen, then you're going to need to clean it up with a little damp cotton bud, and then you're ready for the next colour. It's also worth mentioning that it needs to be symmetrical on both sides, so both halves need to be painted the same colour in the same places so that when you put them together it makes one whole thing. The next colour I'm going to use is the mint. And for the mint I'm going to do the spines down the back. And it's literally just getting a little bit of powder and dabbing it onto the mould. It will go everywhere but that's why you're cleaning between each colour. There's no point in trying to go over previous colour because you'll only see the first colour that hits the mould when you turn it out. So you can't merge the colours together because it doesn't work that way. If you'd like to see a more in-depth tutorial on how to colour moulds, I'll link four ways to colour moulds in the top right hand corner. So again, cleaning up before I do the next colour, just to clean off the areas I want the next colour to go in. And I'm going back to the champagne because there's areas that I've decided that I want champagne i.e. his hands and his feet, paws and claws. If you have any questions you'd like to ask or any comments you want to make about this video, please do use the section below and I will get back to you. At the moment, I do have a 100% success rate in answering comments too. So once I'm happy with that, again, a little bit of a clean up, not much this time, as I try to keep the mica powder in the right place. I won't put you through all this. Most of this video is speeded up for your ease of viewing. It does take a little bit longer than what you're seeing here. So the blue is going on the every area that hasn't had any mica powder. And that's the easiest bit because it doesn't matter if you go over original colours because you won't see it. It might make the original colour a little darker though. So once that's all done, again a little bit of a clean up with a baby wipe and I'm ready for Vista Cascade. That's my resin that I'm using today. I'm going to be using the Vista Colours Black. It's a beautiful silky black that blends really, really easily into resin. 
and as it's designed by Vista, probably a good idea to use their colours as well, but I don't always. Now I lost some footage here unfortunately. The battery died while I was in the midst of putting the resin in. So unfortunately you got the beginning and the end, but I'm, I'm sure you understand that I just put the resin in the mould and made sure it went into every little crevice and every little nook and cranny. Making sure it goes right into those spines. We don't want bubbles in this. And I'm just pushing the poke in the stick around to make sure there's no trapped air. Topping it up and leaving it for 24 hours. So the following day it's time to demould. Excited about this one. I do love putting colours in moulds. Kind of wish there was a lot more choice of 3D two-part moulds as well. Oh, that fell out. We'll look at that one in a minute. Excited to see if this works at this point. I've always wanted to put a dragon in an egg. Now then, does it fit together? That is the big issue that I have. And actually, it looks really, really good. I'm quite surprised. Now I do have to sand the backs of both of these halves because if you're going to glue them together you want to make sure they're going to be flat, completely flat, so that they sit together. And if you sand the back then you've got a good surface for the glue to stick to. Quick wipe off, sand both halves. It's only a quick little sand with 600 grit. And then I've got some two-part epoxy glue. This is five mini aerodite glue. You don't need very much of it. A little squirt is plenty. Make sure you put the lid on properly. It doesn't take much to mix this up. A couple of minutes, and well, not even that, it's about a minute to mix it up completely. And although it's five minute glue, really it doesn't set in five minutes. It gives you five minutes to work with it. So it's, it's quite quick glue, but you do have to work fairly fast. They don't want to be mixing it for five minutes because you won't be able to use it. It'll be solid by the time you come to use it. So I'm putting it all over one half, making sure there's no gaps and I've completely covered it because I'm not going to put any glue on the other half. As this will be pushed together, glue will seep out from the joints and I want to not have too much of that. But I've got little tiny clamps sitting there that I actually bought from Poundland, believe it or not. They are ideal for this kind of thing. They're going to squeeze it together, get all the spare glue out and hold it in place. So it's time to go on to the dragon egg mould. And my little dragon is all nicely stuck together and I need to figure out how I'm gonna sit him in the center. So what I thought I'd do is to fill up the top of the mould with resin so that he could sit in the center. So I'm just measuring where top of his head would be on the egg if he was sitting in the center of the mould. And I'm going to fill up that top part with resin. Now I have little tiny beads of resin that I've put into a pebble mould over time. And I've pulled out all the white and blue ones. And I'm going to be mixing them with Vista Turbo. Mixing them all into the resin so that I don't get any bubbles. And I'm putting them into the top of the mould up to the line that I've marked. So I'm hoping that these little beads will actually look like parts of a shell. You know, the different colours of a shell? That, that's the way I'm thinking anyway. And this should give me the right place for me to put the dragon in once it's partly cured. That's the way I'm thinking. Once it's partly cured, I can use it to secure the dragon into the right place. That's the plan. Time will tell if that's going to work. But for now, going back to the dragon, I just want to bling him up a little bit. So I'm using the Krylon gold leafing pen to highlight some of the high points on this little dragon. Parts of the spines and the wings and the ears and just the parts that I want to show off a little more. I do actually go over again with the deco colour gold because I didn't feel that the Krylon was giving me the sparkle that I required or, or really wanted. And this deco colour is definitely hands down better. This is just my opinion. It's sparkler, it's brighter, it's shinier. And I do love this pen. It's such a shame that they're so hard to get in the UK. They're occasionally on Amazon and I will link them, but most of the time they're out of stock. And some people do bring them in, but they charge a fortune for them. And I won't pay a fortune for something that just costs a few dollars in America. 
So I know it's got to come over from America. I know it's got to have import tax on it, which I'm willing to pay. But yeah, I'm not going to do double the price. It's ridiculous. But I love Decor Color. And they last a surprisingly long time as well. Anyway, back to the egg. It's now been curing for a couple of hours. And it's time for me to try and put the dragon in the centre by basically wedging it into soft-ish resin. Now, I've got fat fingers and it's really difficult to get him positioned inside the opening. It's not easy. I try tweezers. I try a few things that I've taken out of the video. But basically, I think I've got him in the right place. I've pushed him into the resin so he's kind of stable. But to stop him from falling one way or the other, I'm using silicon straws just to hold him upright. Once it's cured up, I then go on to backfill with Vista Ocean just to the bottom of his feet in completely clear resin. And once that's cured, it's time to do the base. Now I've got some more of the little pebbles that I put on the top to put on the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing with Turbo as I did for the top. Fill the base with as many pebbles as I have left because this is all I have left. And then I'm going to top it up with a blue colour for the base of the egg. Now I am aware that he's slightly off centre, or slightly lean to one side, but I'm going with it. It's nothing I can do about it now. Don't forget to push the subscribe button. I upload every Tuesday and sometimes other times as well. So hit the notification bell. And I'm using Perlex dual blue green for the base i figured that would that color would mix in well with the little pebble pieces that i've put in and i'm pouring it directly onto the other wet resin this is straight away when i've put the pebbles in and then let it cure so this is the following day and i need to demold now the best way i've found to demold is to put some kind of liquid either washing that liquid, isopropyl alcohol, or even a touch of silicon oil between the whatever it is you're demolding and the mold. And you just squish it all round and out it pops. Now I am going to show you very briefly on how I made the turned egg. I made the little dragon the same way. I shaved off the base so it had a flat bottom and I secured him with Loctite super glue onto a rounded piece of wood. I'm not sure what type of wood this is. It didn't have a label when I got it from my garage, but I thought it looked quite pretty. So I'm using this wood, rounded it off to a round shape so that it would fit inside an empty HDPE bottle that I'm using as a mold. So sticking him onto the wood, there's my bottle. I'm spraying it with mold release and I'm going to put the wood that I've shaved to the correct size into the bottle. That's satisfying, isn't it? So then I backfill the whole amount with Vista resin and I'm using Ocean. So I completely fill this bottle up with clear resin and it goes directly straight into my pressure pot where it sits for 48 hours. I then can't turn it for a little while because it's still curing. But once I do, I take it to the garage. I'm not going to show you all of the turning because it's not a turning video. But briefly, I want to show you that this is how I do it. I use carbide tools. I use a Record Power Coronet Herald lathe. And although it does take me a while because I'm a slow turner, I'm very new to this turning malarkey, I do get where I want to be and then I have to shine it up. Well, if you're looking for an egg mold, this one is definitely an affordable option. It's quite cheap, but it's good. And what you get is really, really sweet. It's difficult to get the dragon fetus in the center. It is difficult to do that because you haven't got much of an opening at the top to secure him. However, it's a fetus in the egg. So it doesn't really matter if it's not quite centered, does it? <laughs> in my opinion. But I think he came out absolutely gorgeous. Now, when you do a wood turn in blank, it is easy or easier to get it centered. So in that respect, it's easier to turn that kind of egg. Now, if you're not a lathe, if you're not a lathe worker, if you don't have a lathe, this is brilliant because I always wanted to turn a dragon egg. 
And now I've done it, and there's a mould that does it too. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. Come back and see me next week because you never know what I'm going to be up to. Happy crafting, have a great week, and bye for now. <laughs>